Welcome to Virtual Worship at Trinity Lutheran Church. This is the worship service for Sunday, February 13th, 2022. We are gathering together for worship in person again at 8 o'clock and 10.30 on Sunday mornings. If you feel comfortable joining us, you are most welcome to. We are continuing to mask following CDC guidelines, but we are gathering together in person. 8 o'clock and 10.30, Bible study at 9.15 and Sunday school at 9.15. We're also doing some of the things that we've done in the past. We're gathering soap for Lutheran World Relief packages that we're going to be sending off for distribution. We're doing the soup, S-O-U-P-E-R, Super Bowl, on uh, this Sunday the 13th, bringing in food that will be distributed to the Hockenham Valley Community Council, whether you're rooting for the Bengals or for the Rams, or if you are in that middle category of God doesn't keep score, a food donation is most appreciated. And you could do that through through Monday. We'll probably take the food over to HVCC on Monday, the 14th, Valentine's Day. If there is any way that I or anybody else in your church family can be of assistance to you, please let me know if you would, if you're still not comfortable coming to worship and you would like to receive Holy Communion, please reach out to me. Let me know. We can arrange, we can arrange that. Uh, and if there is a way that you feel that you could help out, if you can, perhaps if you're feeling comfortable coming to worship and you feel you could provide a ride for somebody, please let me know. We do have a need for that. And for there are other ways that you can be helpful to people in your church community and in your community beyond. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. The first reading is from Exodus chapter 15. Then Moses ordered Israel to set out from the Red Sea, and they went into the wilderness of Shur. They went three days into the wilderness and found no water. When they came to Marah, they could not drink the water of Marah because it was bitter. That is why it was called Marah. And the people complained against Moses, saying, What shall we drink? He cried out to the Lord, and the Lord showed him a piece of wood. He threw it into the water, and the water became sweet. There the Lord made for them a statute and ordinance that there he put them to the test. He said, if you will listen carefully to the voice of the Lord your God and do what is right in his sight and give heed to his commandments and keep all his statutes, I will not bring upon, upon you any of the diseases that I brought upon the Egyptians, for I am the Lord who heals you. Then they came to Elam, where there were twelve springs of water and plenty of palm trees, and they camped there by the water. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel comes among us in the words of St. Luke, the sixth chapter. Jesus came down with them and stood on a level place with a great crowd of his disciples and a great multitude of people from all Judea, Jerusalem, and the coast of Tyre and Sidon. They had come to hear him and to be healed of their diseases. And those who were troubled with unclean spirits were cured. And all in the crowd were trying to touch him, for power came out from him and healed all of them. Then he looked up at his disciples and said, Blessed are you who are poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. Blessed are you who are hungry now, for you will be filled. Blessed are you who weep now, for you will laugh. Blessed are you when people hate you, and when they exclude you, revile you, and defame you on account of the Son of Man. Rejoice in that day and leap for joy, for surely your reward is great in heaven, for that is what their ancestors did to the prophets. But woe to you who are rich, for you have received your consolation. Woe to you who are full now, for you will be hungry. 
Woe to you who are laughing now, for you will mourn and weep. Woe to you when all speak well of you, for that is what their ancestors did to the false prophets. This is the Gospel of the Lord. We are continuing our series on hearing God. That hearing God impacts our lives in many different ways. And we started off with the, with the reality, with the admission, confession, if you will, that we are, generally speaking, hard of hearing. We are a people that do not hear God's voice as much as we would like to. And why is that? Why is it that we don't hear God? And there's a lot of reasons why we don't hear that voice. And I'm not talking about a sky opening experience where the light shines down and you hear a booming voice from heaven or you are like Moses, you run across a burning bush and hear the voice of God come out of the burning bush. I'm talking about that voice of God that comes to us in subtle ways, that comes to us through the scripture, that comes to us through a friend, that comes to us through a teaching, that comes to us when we are spending time in silence or out in nature, where we get that nudge from God, that invitation from God, that encouragement from God. But oftentimes we don't hear it. We're hard of hearing. And maybe it's, you know, maybe it's because we don't feel that we're worthy enough to get a message from God. I think that's true. There, there's many times where we don't, well, that, that, that couldn't come to me. I mean, come on, I'm just, I'm just me. I couldn't, get a, I couldn't get an invitation from God. I couldn't get a nudge from God. But God speaks into all of our lives. All of us are beloved of God. And so that, that nudge does come to all of us. That voice does come to all of us. If we're paying attention, if we take that time to pay attention, and I think mostly it's hard for us to pay attention to that voice or to hear that voice because we're so busy. You know, people say to me all the time, you must be so busy. And I say, no, I'm not busy. Because you know what busy is? B-U-S-Y. Burdened under Satan's yoke. That's busy. I don't want to be busy. I don't want to be burdened under Satan's yoke. I don't want to be distracted from the important things in the world. I don't want to feel like I can't do things and that I'm just frazzled all the time. And I'm sure you don't either. And part of that is the way that we self-identify. We don't have to say, oh, I'm so busy. What I like to say is my life is full. I have all kinds of good things that God has given me to do. I have all kinds of people in my life that I get to talk to. I have all kinds of activities that I get to engage in. And that is a good thing. But I'm not busy. I'm not frazzled. And when we're not busy and we're not frazzled, we're more open and more available to hear God's voice and to respond to those nudges and invitations that God gives us. And last week we talked about the, the invitation that comes from God, the call that comes from God, and that that call can come, it came for Isaiah in a tough time. The year that King Uzziah died, that king that had ruled for decades, it was a pretty good king, had done good stuff for, for the country of Israel. Now the king is dead and people are wondering what's going to happen. And that's when the voice of God came to Isaiah to tell him to bring a tough message to the people. And Isaiah heard that voice, he heard that message, and he, he accepted that call and that invitation. You know, he said, here I am, Lord, send me, send me. And we have that same opportunity, we have that same op, uh, ability, that when God gives us that invitation, when God gives us that, that push to speak into, you know, into other people's lives. That when God gives us that, uh, that nudge to do things in the world, we can respond with, here I am, Lord, send me. And we can engage in that good work that God has for us. And this week, we're, we're talking about 
the reality that God's voice, that hearing God, also brings healing into our lives. That hearing God brings restoration and, and wholeness into our lives. That one of God's main identities is the one who heals. That's what, that's what our first reading today from Exodus told us. God says, I am the one who heals you. When, when the Israelites heard that, that affirmed in their lives that God was restoring them. You know, they, they had just experienced some hard times. They were just, they were just at Mara. They were feeling they the, the bitter water. They were tested. They're probably feeling discouraged. And God says, I am the one who heals you. And when you're with me, when you walk with me, you know, all those, all those plagues that happened to the Egyptians, they won't happen to you. Walk with me because I am the one who heals you, who restores you, who brings you into a place of wholeness. And that's the same for us. It's the same for us, that God is the one who heals us. And we know that that's true many times in terms of illness, right? That, that God does heal. We've seen it many times, that God does heal. But more importantly, it's also true that hearing God heals us and makes us whole, not just on a physical level, but on a deeper spiritual level. You know, and that's really what's happening in this text from, from the Gospel of Luke. You know, it says that the people came out to Jesus and that they came to hear him and to be healed of their diseases. That they knew there was a connection between hearing Jesus and being healed. And healing is what happened, right? It says in the text, people were healed of their diseases. That they, those that had unclean spirits were healed. And that people longed to try to touch him because there was, there was power. There was power coming out of him that was making people whole. But that wasn't all that was happening. He, Jesus was speaking to them, not only to heal their diseases, not only to cast out those spirits that were tormenting them, that were steering them in wrong directions, that were, that were plaguing their minds. That's all important, and that's, that's, that is a, a beautiful gift but that's not all that Jesus was doing. He was also speaking to them so that they would hear and also be healed on a deeper level. That they would know that they were blessed. That even though they were poor, they were blessed. That even though they were hungry, they were blessed. That even though they were filled with grief, for whatever brokenness was in their lives, they were filled with grief. You know, maybe, maybe someone they loved had died. Maybe they were just grieving about their own brokenness and sin. Maybe they were grieving just about how broken the world was, how messed up the world was. Don't you feel that way sometimes? Don't you just feel like mourning over how messed up, how broken, how distorted the world is, that you look out and you say, how could it be like that? How could there be so much wrong? That is just so sad. We mourn over that, over all of the, all of the things that are just, some of the things that are even just unspeakable, and we mourn over that. And the thing is, as Jesus says, even though you're mourning, even though you're hungry, even though you're poor, even though people hate you, you're blessed. And when those people heard that assurance, they knew that they really were blessed, that they really were loved by God, that there really was a future that God was preparing for them. And brothers and sisters, it is 
as I often say, it is the same for us. When we hear these words, it's a reminder to us that we're blessed. And, and ideally what happens when we hear those words that we're blessed, even though, even though we're hungry, even though we're hungry for more, even though we're hungry for a better world, even though we're mourning over our own and others' brokenness, even though people might hate us, we know that we're blessed. We hear that word of blessing, and it brings goodness and assurance into our lives. It's that voice of God. It's hearing that voice that makes us alive. You know, God's voice that called the universe into existence. God's voice that shaped us throughout our lives. That's that, that voice, that voice, that's what drew people to Jesus. You know, they came to him. They came to him to hear and be healed. It's the, it's the same reason we come together too, to hear the words from God, to hear the words of Jesus, to hear, to be reassured, to be healed, to seek out life. You know, some people in that crowd, they were seeking physical healing. Some people just needed to be reassured. They needed to know that they were loved. Some people needed to be reminded that they were precious in God's sight, that they had worth, that they had value, that they were important. Other people needed, needed freedom. They needed to be released from all those messages that said that they were unworthy, that they were, that they were unloved, that they were excluded. And Jesus gave them those words. He spoke that reassurance, and they heard, and they were healed. And Jesus continues to speak those words to us. Jesus gathers in all of the broken people. He speaks those words of love and assurance. And if we are willing to hear them, if we're willing to hear that they are for us, we too will be healed and made whole. Thanks be to God. Just another song
The prayer response will be, hear our prayer. The spirit of the Lord is poured out on us in abundance. So we are bold to pray for the church, the world, and all that God has made. Blessed are those whose trust is in you. Strengthen the faith of those who profess your name and bring reassurance to those who doubt or fear. Through your church, speak continued blessing into the world. God of grace, hear our prayer. Those who trust in you are like trees planted by streams of water. Bless fruit trees with an abundant harvest. Protect rainforests from destruction. Restore land that has eroded after deforestation. Resurrect woodlands after forest fires. God of grace, hear our prayer. Search the hearts of those who govern, that they lead with humility. Inspire leaders to collaborate on policies that protect people and the planet. Sustain truth tellers and social movements that challenge society to become more honest and just. God of grace, hear our prayer. Send your blessings of mercy upon those who long for consolation. Tend to those struggling with poverty, unemployment, or uncertainty. Provide for all who are hungry. Console those who face persecution. Grant peace to all who suffer, especially Ellie and Horst, Michael, Kurt and Cindy, Julie, Edith, Laurie, Paul, Vanessa, John, Jackie, Gerhard, Brianna and Eliana, Steve and Ellie, Joanne and Frank, Judy, Sapphire. Diane, Dwayne, the Reese Ash family, Paul, Lynn Marie, Carol, Rhoda, Emily, Cheryl, Jason and family, Jean, Mike, Chris, Alma, Jamie, Cam, Josh, Maggie, Ed, Gail and Richard, Holly, Deb, Caitlin, Helen, Don, Wendy, Mark, Gildo, Dean, Max, Aiden, Noreen, Helen, Marianne, Elvira, Janet, Jennifer, Megan, Ken, Kurt, Billy Jean, Connie, Chris, Peter, Joan, Andrew, Joe, Gregory, Diana, Ella, Noreen, Alan, Ava, Glenn, Michael, Liz, Martha, Naomi, Jim, Jerry, Sarah, Eric, Sue, JP, all of our shut-ins, the people of Shishmaref and all Alaskan villages. God of grace, hear our prayer. Renew this congregation in our shared mission. 
As we plan and dream for the future you are preparing, inspire us by the examples of Martin Luther and all the reformers. Bless new projects and new ministry partnerships. God of grace, hear our prayer. Here, other intercessions may be offered. Christ is raised from the dead, and so we cling to the hope of the resurrection. We praise you for the lives of the saints who lived and died in the hope of eternal life with you. God of grace, hear our prayer. Since we have such great hope in your promises, O oh God, we lift these and all of our prayers to you in confidence and faith. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Let us pray together as Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Thank you for worshiping with us. We are moving back toward, I don't know what the word is, new normal, better normal. A place where we can once again gather together and encourage one another and have fellowship together. And I'm looking forward to the day when we could even eat together freely in, uh, in a big group. To, uh, you can put something on your calendar in pencil, March 12th, 2022, tentatively, we will be having a congregation meeting. We'll decide for sure at a council meeting this coming week but hopefully we'll have a special congregation meeting on March 12th to consider the official merger document for First Lutheran and Trinity Lutheran coming together. First Lutheran already has that date on their calendar, so if you're a member of First Lutheran and you're watching that, please note that there will be a congregation meeting for First Lutheran on March 12th, and that meeting will be here at 20 Meadow Lark Road at Trinity's building. We are moving forward in coming back together, and that is a wonderful thing. If you have any questions about that, please feel free to send me an email or give me a call. And now may Almighty God, who raised again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, bless you abundantly. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit.